Hello, welcome to Autumn in Scotland. I'm making this video as a kind of roundup of things I find interesting in the past week at Friday Reads, if you like. And it's of things that are across the board. It's not only books, but also I enjoy films and arts broadly in terms of other things like music and graphics and photography and I'll be talking a bit about the various things I've come across and enjoyed in the past week. I'm making this for your enjoyment, for me because I like to make these films and also so that whenever I'm doddery and a little bit more vague than I even am already, I will remember what I did <laughs> in the third week in September in 2023. So I'm going to be making some soup because obviously autumn, slightly chilly, it's a thin soup and um, it's a red pepper soup with limes and I'll chat to you while I'm doing it and I'll look at my social media because I tend to use it as a reminder of anything I find interesting. I have a habit of jumping onto social media and getting in, sharing the good news. So there'll be chopping signs. The oven is also currently on at the moment because someone else in the house is having lunch and I didn't see why they should starve just so that I could do a little bit of recording. So, um, first of all, one of the, the most early things that caught my interest was a book about Chinese cooking and it appeared on a book opening done by Steve Donoghue and it was called Invitation to a Banquet, the Story of Chinese Food by a lady called Fuchsia de Lop. And Steve Donoghue said that he would love to be called that and he wished people called him that. So I'm going to bear that in mind. Um, when he least expects it. Hello Fuchsia. But anyway, so she has a very interesting story. I went, I have to find out about people. If I'm going to read a book, follow a writer, I have to find out about them. Which sounds a bit like... <clears throat> social media stalking, but uh, it's just called I call it research. That's my the way I come to terms with it. So Fuchsia Den Lop um, is a lady from the West who went to study some other another topic in China, but got absolutely fell in love with the cuisine, especially in the Sichuan um, province. And she ended up changing career, training to be a chef. Now this was quite an unusual thing because women in the country at that time didn't normally train to be chefs. There was herself I think and a couple of other women and then a room full of guys uh, looking at this white woman bemusedly thinking why is she studying this. So she went the whole hog, she learnt Chinese, she studied and loved the flavours, loved the whole cuisine and of course any cuisine that you look at is going to tell you a lot about the country, the people, the traditions, the history. And so she got very much into that and has brought this knowledge back, put it into lovely books. I mean, the whole title of the book, which is now, now my computer's gone to sleep, I'll have to rewind it. Type with onion fingers. Invitation to a banquet. So what I did was, you can listen to it. So I listened to her reading the story and I thought that is the audiobook I would like to get. The next audiobook I would like to get. Alicia Dunlop, Invitation to a So that was the first book. And speaking about spoken word, we've got the voice. I came across a video of Edith Sitwell reading one of her poems. Now Edith is one of life's great eccentrics. If you're interested in eccentrics, English eccentrics, you must <clears throat> make sure that your mental tour goes to where she lived uh, the, and her, herself and her family. And she wrote this poem called Still Falls the Rain and YouTube has got a performance of it. And she's talking about the Blitz and what it was like for people in London in World War II getting bombed. And of course, I'm sure it was similar for so many other towns and cities in Europe coming across the same constant bombing, 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 bombing. And she likens it to the 
um, experience of Christ in Calvary and her voice is amazing. And again and again the refrain comes around, it still falls the rain. <coughs> and the onions are getting to me. Oh my eyes, whoa. Onions don't normally get past uh, glass, but this one just did. Oh. And the repeated refrain is absolutely perfect for expressing what it was like to have this constantly returning, constantly falling down devastation, still falls the rain, still falls the rain. It's absolutely perfect to have it repeating because you have this merciless event of being born, this experience happening which during the Blitz was every day for at least a week as well as, of course, the usual um, war, problems and suffering. I'll give you a little clip of what it sounds like so you can hear what I mean. And if I'm crying, it is the onions. Still falls the rain, not this world of man that is our loss. Lying as the 1940 nails among the falls away with a sound like the pulse of the heart that is changed for the hammer beat. Still falls away in the field of blood where the small hopes breed and the human brain nurtures its greed that worm with the brow of pain. Still falls away at the feet of the starved man hung upon the cross. Christ, that each day, each night, nails there, have mercy on us, on dying and on Lazarus. I'm going to have to pick up the piece, otherwise this soup is not going to get made in time. I'm going to actually do double quantity because it's so much to cut and prepare. This week I also saw a fantastic new documentary on BBC called um, Chanel, Go With Chanel Unbuttoned, it's about her life brilliant, quite long, about an hour and a half, but beautifully researched. So of course I had to find out um, one of the people who appeared most knowledgeable. Um, I had to find out more about her. She's a writer. She's written a biography of Coco Chanel, which was published about 2010-2011, has just been re-released, looks as revised, looks fantastic. And that is Justine Picardy and I would love to get that book but it's uh, hardback, it's expensive um, I'm not sure if I can squeeze that into my book buying budget anytime soon but I would love to it's on my TBR list and it's got that feeling of something recently I was interested in so um, now is the time to buy because in a while I will sort of it'll recede from memory because there'll be something else replacing it so I had a sneaky peek at the start of the book in Amazon where they let you see the start and I thought it looks incredibly well written. And during the programme Justine was very informative and very reflective on Chanel's life. So it's not just a gossipy kind of thing but it's thinking about a person's life and its meaning and, and how she coped with all the different things in her life. We're going to need a bigger saucepan. So it's, I can't recommend it high enough, try and catch it uh, to view if you are, if you have access to BBC. And yeah, and also during it there was a little bonus where one other contributor was filmed in a gorgeous setting, a little living room, which has become my new ideal living space. And I'll insert a picture to let you see. So I want to see Chanel. Now, a couple of interesting things from the documentary I hadn't realised before is that not only did she free up women to move, as in giving clothes that were fluid, so women didn't have to wear corsets. It also meant that when the corsets were taken away, the body was revealed because the fabric draped from the body. So, as one of the commentators said, it causes us an anxiety about shape and body. 
you can no longer just compensate by sticking yourself in a corset. And my thinking in that is that we still have that today. This deep pressure that you should be very, very slim to look good in clothes and that that is the ideal. And although we have body positivity, the original idea of being very skinny is still a norm. And if you go and look at a woman's a, a display of magazines in a newsagent store and you look at what is in the women's area of interest, I think you'll find that most of the fabulous bodies um, in adverts and on covers are very slim. There are some now that will be different sizes, but there are also a huge range of dieting magazines aimed specifically at women. And there will be probably a dieting feature inside a lot of women's magazines that don't claim to even be about food. Check it out, give it a go yourself, see what you think. And the second thing about Chanel that came out in the programme is that she was deeply important to the modernist movement, to financing people like Sergei Diaghilev, who with the Valley Race was forever searching for money. Um, Igor Stravinsky is quite famous as she had an association with him and funded him. But there were others as well. And she was friends with, um, his name escapes me. Uh, Salvador Dali and also the poet and filmmaker, um, the French filmmaker, whose name I'll have to put in below because I can't remember him, <laughs> but he was key as well. Um, and she was based in Paris at a time whenever all the arts were flourishing there and people still would speak about it as a time when they would have liked to have been in Paris 1930s, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was there and very key. So that was Chanel. This week I enjoyed an essay. Only I didn't read it, I watched it. It was a video essay and it was to do with paintings and film. And the title was Paintings and Movies from 2001, A Space Odyssey to Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And it was looking at paintings appearing in, in videos, very intermedial. And I be you could begin watching it just to idly check which films you have seen from them. And then you're probably likely to stay for the quality of discussion on it. I do recommend it. It's about questions of representation, copying, what is reality, identity, and it was thought provoking and yet not overly difficult to follow. All the autumnal colours. Mm. This week I finally got to make a video about a visit to one of my favourite secondhand bookshops, uh, Leakey's in Inverness, and the video was titled Secondhand Lives because I stayed in the little little kind of booth shape because you have the, the, the bookshelves are, are put into little sort of sections curving round and I stayed in the one that was labelled Entertainments and we came across a whole lot of books to do with biography. So if you watch the video, you're probably going to see a whole lot of different entertainment figures, biographies appearing and you might be finding some are of interest to you or of your favourite people. In booktube terms, I've enjoyed seeing Hannah from Hannah's Books coming back and was showing her video of her TBR for October the mixture of Victorian books in the month of October. I think I've peaked too early for that because recently I've read three trollops in a row and so I'm kind of concerned to go near him because I find his books, once I start, I want to finish. And I'm used to finishing shorter books quite quickly, but his are not. His are 300, 400, 500, 600 pages. And so, it can take a, whole, take a weekend where I'm still furiously reading it because I want to find out what happens next. I do think if you like Victorian novels, you probably would enjoy the range of characters he does, 
um, and although it does tend to be ones where somebody rich wants to marry someone very poor, vice versa, and there's also class comes into it as well. So, yeah, I wonder if you liked Jane Austen, if you would like Trollop. Is there a link? Let me know, drop a comment. Um, do you like both of them or neither or one? <laughs>